your mastermind, you have one coming up soon, right? Yes, October 17th, 18th, and 19th. So tell me what's going through your mind right now as you are in the the home stretch of the planning. I hate it. (laughs) I thought it would take us a little bit longer to get to this point, John. No, no. But we're there, and we're only a few minutes in. Excellent. Well, okay, so let's talk about this. How are entrepreneurs like us daring bravely to build a stage, ditch the sweatpants, and step up to the mic? How do we create our own transformative events so we can get our message out into the world in a bigger way that's not only profitable, but it's actually something we can be proud of? That's the question. And the answers are inside this podcast. My name is Sarah Pfeiffer. Welcome to Green Room Central. Today, I brought into Green Room Central Studios John Sarakis, president of Oyova, a web plus app development and marketing agency with offices in Jacksonville and St. Petersburg, Florida. John's also general manager of Digital Mastermind, where he acts as a connector for a collective group of agency owners who come together to elevate the industry. Their annual mastermind event is powerfully different in that it's agencies learning from other agencies without the typical guru or coach. John, welcome to Green Room Central Studios. Say hello to Lynchpin Nation. Thank you for having me. Hello, Lynchpin Nation. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I want to know what your superpower is, John, when it comes to hosting masterminds. What do you think it is? Enthusiasm. Are you enthused for the opportunities to network? Is that what gets you going? Or is it watching like the connections that people make when because you've curated such a cool group of people that you bring together? What is it? What are you I enthused love, about? I love getting a lot of people together that discover something where they get these aha moments. I love going, um, kind of going toe to toe with cynics and then making them believers, if you will, and just like really small things. So uh, yeah, that's something that I, I enjoy. And then just not giving up, right? It's just having lots of, uh, lots of energy in the right direction can really create some positive things, especially when a lot of people are coming together to, to learn something. And if they're going to share confidential information, there, there's a lot of trust that's in there. So that's, that's very energizing. So it brings a lot of enthusiasm out of me. So you're basically creating an, an, an arena that allows you to really do all the things that you love, like these, like watching ahas and the turning cynics into believers and kind of cheering people on so they don't give up teaching them new things like it's all your favorite things and essentially your mastermind is like a container for that it is i don't know if arena is the best word because that sounds like it's super combative but (laughs) it's not it's a very safe space but uh and i I don't want it like it's not like a room full of cynics where i'm holding up you know like religious you know icons and whatnot and we're not walking over coals or sacrificing (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're just a bunch of marketers, right? So, um, but yeah, it's it's that it's getting a bunch of people together in that, and um, everything you said is accurate except for the, the maybe the arena combatant part. Got it, got it. So, how do you create a safe space for folks? I I think it just starts with language. So first off, it's actually acknowledging what we're there to do, and it's saying it's uh, you know. One of uh, my predecessors that you know started this mastermind would say, it's like, all right, hey, there's the front of the house of the restaurant where everything looks really pretty and, yes, and yes. Uh, yeah, the tables are set really nice. And then there's the back of the house where it's an absolute mess. There's people sweating all over the place and they're trying to cook your food and there's burnings happening and everything's running around. It said, all right, we're going to take everybody into the back of the house. And that's what we, you know, but we don't want anybody uh, to judge or, you know, tell anybody about what's mm-hmm. in the back of our house. So it's really kind of giving something contextual, setting a table, if you will, and just asking everything that is said here stays here. And over the last 10 years, I can say uh, I'm a little bit superstitious. I'm going to knock on some wood. That, that's happened. And there hasn't been one complaint otherwise. And keep reinforcing that, right? Just saying, hey, this is confidential and so on and so forth. Because you're all business owners coming together to help kind of share your trade secrets that can help the other business owner get better in their own 
And so I think you have to create that safety. Otherwise, people are going to want to hold yeah. um, hold their cards close to their vest. Absolutely. So good. So your mastermind, you have one coming up soon, right? Yes. October 17th, 18th, and 19th. So tell me what's going through your mind right now as you are in the home stretch of the planning. I hate it. <laughs> I thought it would take us a little bit longer to get to this point, John. No, but no, we're there I'll be, I'll be. and we're only a few minutes in. Yeah. Excellent. Well, okay. So let's talk about this. Where cuz we've talked before about how there is resentment that comes up sometimes yeah. and some hatred that comes up as you're yeah. going into this the planning for an event that you love mm. and where what's what where does it come from just things not falling in place and just all of the little like excuses and tweaks that may come from whether it's vendors or little little quests and things like that so and i think it's more my personality than anything um that uh that goes into that and it's for like such an awesome group of people like we have just these people that come together and they share is absolutely amazing but when it comes to dealing with a canceled speaker or two canceled speakers uh you know dealing with those types of things are just like really irritating and especially when you have a contract where you're like i could sue you but i don't want to do that uh, yeah yeah. You know, so those so, are just the, the, those are the small things that that always come up or like the hotel, you know, you go back and forth on certain things because you want everything to be right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I have a team that really helps out a lot. But I think it's yeah, I'm not I'm not Mr. Event. We do, you know, one per year when we try to make it amazing and we always have really good reviews and it's 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 a great time. But I think right towards the end, it's just all the pressure and all the things that are coming coming to a head with, you know, weeks left that just kind of burns you out a little bit. Yeah, well, I I get it. Um, I lived and breathed the industry for 20 years, I feel. I know exactly (laughs) what you're talking about. I bet I know our listeners know exactly what you're talking about. And I wonder if I wonder if part of it could be either. So anything that happens in the world, like nothing has meaning except for the meaning that we place on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to tell ourselves a different story during this like last 90 days leading up to the event that all of this stuff is happening for us. And, you know, we've got this and grace under pressure and all the, what do all the things that you have to do in order to stay in the mindset that I am marching towards my favorite thing right now. And yeah, like there's, all these problems that come up because they're just, it's inevitable. <laughs> it is absolutely, I, I think it is absolutely inevitable to march into an event season and have that entire stretch be like problem free. It just, yeah. It's the nature of the beast. And I think it is just that we have to put on a different lens. And I wonder if you... And maybe My lens, just have I think, your team is not the... tell you things. <laughs> maybe is the answer for you. <laughs> it could be. Mine is so. I think mine's maybe the other direction where I try to detach. I'm not attached to the outcome because the more attached I am to the outcome, the more pressure it creates. That's our interpretation of it, right? So, totally along the lines of what you said is like, yeah, looking at like you know what is this signaling to us. So that's what I try to do. Is like, okay, everything is going to work out. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and and move back and um and make sure it works because it's the the weirdest thing about an event is all of these things have to culminate so it works you have sponsors you have people that have to show up you have speakers that have to deliver you have you know food and all these depending on what you're going to do with your event and ours is pretty it's not a huge event but there's a lot of moving pieces so it's just that it's just all right and knowing that it all works out in the end you're completely, you know, detached and you're just going to do the best that you can. Kind of just try to find your zone. Yeah, I agree. And and then also, you know, you're running a business at the same time as putting yeah, on an event. Totally. It's, a, it's a balancing act. It really yeah. is. It does take a lot in order to commit to do this. And um, 
yeah, I honor everybody who decides to do it because it's such a gift to those who choose to be in the room. Yeah, you know? it takes something. Yeah, I mean, you're the only one who can gather this like special group of people in order for you know like the serendipity of whatever's going to happen in the room to happen, and it gets it's, it is a gift like that you're willing to take this on for all of them. But um, we got we got to get through the slog part. <laughs> <laughs> figure out how to rename it so yeah. that uh, it doesn't drain all the life out of us before we get to the finish line. So tell me about your philosophy on guest speakers, because I know you have some Yeah. that come. It's not just the John show. So how do you, what, how do you think about who you want to bring in and why you would bring them in and how many you would, like what the balance between you and other people in the mastermind talking and then guest speakers yeah so we've had you know some where it's been like four or five we've had some where it was one i think it really just depends on what like that theme is of the year right of what you really want to talk about kind of like what's the climate that's going on that's going Mm -hmm. to affect all of uh the people i don't like uh like gurus or or any of that uh, where somebody is just very dogmatic in their approach. Um, so the types of speakers, some of them are industry specific, and then some of them are more broad based, whether it would be something related to, let's just say like accounting. And doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that the accounting principles or philosophies that this person believes in are specific to the industry. It's something that would be wide ranging, right, for, for any business owner. And then sometimes we'll bring in uh, agency, you know, specialists that that's all they do is, you know, breathe this stuff, uh, all day. Um, and some of those people can kind of get guru ish, but you can, you know, still have a good time. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it's less motivational and it's more tactical when you're thinking about who you want to bring in someone who can teach something very specific that would, that they can take back to their businesses and implement right away? Yeah, there's been some motivational people and some of the things we've seen from when some of the motivational people that come in is like, hey, look, you know, I'm already a raging fire. I don't need any more gas on top of me. I just need to know how to control the fire, right? So uh, there's that happy balance. And maybe that speaker, some of the speakers just didn't land properly. Um, but yeah, so this year, it's, I think there's going to be a little bit of motivation. Yeah. How do you think about hospitality when you're planning? Because I know you do food and stuff, and not everyone kind of wines and dines their guests, but you do a little of that. And so I want to understand how you think about entertaining people as part of the event. If you're trying to make a connection between people, there is no better way to do it than over a controlled meal. And whether that's the breakfast, the lunches, the dinners, if Mm -hmm. you figure out a way to um, coalesce everybody where they get to share meals and drinks, they will leave having better connections, feeling more connected. Um, I'm sure we've all been to events where you go in and then you're like, oh, I don't really want to kind of network. And you're like, oh, that kind of person looks like and you go through just all those whatever mm-hmm. anxieties that, you know, some people have from a, from a social standpoint. And what we try to do at our event is make sure that somebody feels connected and they're having a conversation with somebody at all times. There's no clicks that break off or any of that. Everybody is this kind of living organism. And I think having amazing restaurants with really good food and fantastic service um, and drinks, if people want the libations, um, can really bring that out. And just, um, yeah, because if you're learning all day and you're just like, oh, man, you can just have a good time, that's when you're really going to be able to, to bond with your peers. And that's what it's all about as a mastermind, you know, a collective. Yeah, I agree. And I am wondering, do you do anything out of the norm at those meal functions like is there something that you say or do that you think allows people to connect more deeply than if you know at some other event uh like like bring in like an elvis impersonator or pretend like it's a a robbery going on 
<laughs> do you tell them, like, do you arrange seating? Do you give them questions to talk about? Or do you just make sure that your focus is on the environment and making sure people feel good with like great food, great drinks, the environment, amazing space, and just that keeps people there. Yeah, yeah. And so, sorry to jump in before you finish your question, but yeah, it's uh, it's creating the environment, and then also just being a good you know curator when you see somebody that's looking where to sit, like hey, you know, hey, how, how, hey, Carl, how about you go ahead and you know take a take a seat right here, and of course there's a toast where you're going to use some communication based on hey everybody you know thank you so much for joining and then kind of give a um a theme to the dinner and you know talk about people getting to know each other better uh that that kind of scenario yeah but i haven't tried assigned seating yet i haven't i guess because the need hasn't been there but if it did show up then absolutely i think that would be a, a great idea i'd be interested to see how that would land on on some people yeah some people might be open to it and others not. Yeah, like, I uh, didn't want to sit here. <laughs> right? Yeah, people like me who are introverted and more shy in a social environment might might think it was fabulous because you're giving me instructions on where to go and how to fit in. And it might, you know, crack me open a little bit easier. But perhaps someone like you, it might, like, it might cramp my style. <laughs> I want to go wherever <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> Okay, so I love that philosophy on hospitality. I think we're we're definitely aligned, and I love to be able to provide all of the meals and such for people, and really kind of curate what that experience is going to be like, instead of having people go off on their own and try and create it themselves. I just I'm a big fan. So, how how many days do you do your event? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yep. And have you tried other like durations and nope. found this to be the best or is just this has always worked? And... This has always worked. Yeah. The so you're in the marketing space, you serve marketing professionals. And what I'm curious about is how that's informed the marketing of the event itself and getting people to show up so it's not a whole lot something that you're doing that's really working um you know if you asked me like six months ago i'd be like oh yeah i'd be pounding my chest but when you're like in the thick of it and you're in the ditch you're like no we're taking on fire right now sarah <laughs> nothing's working no um i th it's the main thing is it's a community we got a really strong community right so all of our members this is this is an event for for them and this is the, I'm going to use some of your language, the, the linchpin of our mastermind, right? So we stay in contact via calls and yep. uh, or Zooms rather and, and this, but this is like the real big connective tissue that, that pulls everybody together. So in marketing it, it's just marketing it to our members. Um, and uh, in some, uh, and this year we've tried a, a few different things, just looking for, for new members because when you have a bunch of people that are learning from each other, there's a natural thing where you need to pull in new blood, right? So it's uh, there, there's fresh ideas and, and keep that. So that's what we've done. Um, and not everybody is applicable to the group. It's it's not like it's kickball and some people are getting picked last. It's just you got to be a right fit, agency size and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool that you have you have a membership you're going to fill the event with the membership, but then that means that your job throughout the year is to get the right new members in so that when it comes time for the event that you have a large enough and the right people in the membership that would then show up for the in-person and just be the right mix in the room for that mastermind. Yeah, exactly. So, you talk about how you're able to differentiate in the marketplace and in a crowded space. And how do you think that that skill serves you when you're bringing new members into your membership? What, what are you using as those points of differentiation? 
think it's the main one is just shared from experience. There isn't a set book or or rule set like a lot of our like a lot of the other groups have. Like, oh, this is the philosophy, and there's some really great ones. And I'm I'm friends with some of the others that that, that run these groups. Um, but it's kind of like this is the way, and it has that kind of uh, like uh, guru feel. And I, and I and I just and that to me is just like. If you if you want to be the most popular kid or something like and this is what you do I just it's kind of like it's just not my thing it's I don't like that so I I'm not like that at all I'm just another agency that's in there that's learning from everybody else right Yeah I love that mindset and that's that's what we create so everybody in there is equal everybody in there can contribute or not contribute to to the same extent and then having that just organically everybody grows together and i've been in this group and doing it and now running it for for years but i've been in it for like 10 years and it's just amazing what people can just learn from each other just by sharing from experience and that's what it is there isn't a uh, oh hey this is what you everybody needs to do this type of marketing automation tool or you, you have to do this there's you, you don't have that homogenization and i think when you have that you realize you are unique, you have strengths in your own specific area, and you're doing tons more thing right than you are wrong. And you really get to uh, polish yourself out by just having experience with others and seeing that, yeah, you might not have to niche like one of these other agencies that, that does and focuses only on hotels. Uh, you know, you don't have to niche vertically, you can niche horizontally and you can just do, you know, SEO or content marketing or, or whatever those things are. I think it gives you that broad spectrum. And you'll literally meet competitors. This is the craziest thing. I have a competitor here in my market that I lose to about half the time. Yeah. And it's just crazy. And we do things completely different. But we will go uh, against each other on these accounts. Um, and uh, it's just amazing because I know I'm like, ah, this is going to be what he does is more attractive to this person. I should probably throw in my hat right now. Um, but not. And um, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of love that comes from that. So you're talking about competitors showing up at the same event. Yes. And how do you get them? I mean, I know we talked about safety earlier, but how do you get them to share, like be willing to sh to share when you do compete for a similar business? I think once you have, this is the other thing too, dealing with business owners and, um, and, what you do, there is no special sauce, right? You're not Steve Jobs for the most part. You, you, you might have something that's a little bit unique, but at the end of the day, it's, it's usually your processes, your blood, sweat, your tears, your passion, and your culture that it's, it's going to get you across the, the finish line. And when um, business owners see this, they realize, like, okay, there, there's more gained from sharing and receiving than there is from just trying to keep everything inside. So once they, they let their guard down and they start sharing and, and people start you know contributing, that's when a lot of the, the magic happens. But it's just mm -hmm. that, like, I hate saying it like this, but it's just like, you're not that special. <laughs> I mean, what you're doing is not that unique. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's not. And, um, but if you, you know, reach out to your others, you'll, you'll figure out how you can be a huge contributor and how you can be a huge gainer and it's just this perpetual positive energy that gets created that's that's good for everybody so good why why did you decide to keep this in person and not not go virtual there's i don't know if it comes down to like biorhythms and like pheromones or something but there's there's a lot more I believe gained in in person events right where you're in there there's just like a certain energy and I think the other thing too is our audience is business owners these are people that lie to themselves all the time because they're overly optimistic and they're like oh yeah I'm gonna sit for this virtual event and I'm just gonna pay attention the whole time no 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 they're gonna be checking their emails and slacks and text messages and doing that and I think there's more of a commitment when you're in the room and a a social uh, like a social driver, like, okay, I, I don't want to be sitting here on my computer typing the whole time. I actually want to be here and present. So it's, it's more effective that way. And how did I learn that? Myself. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm the worst virtual event attendee I think there's ever been. <laughs> I can buy that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. 
uh, and I'm a huge fan of events and I can see how I act differently if it's virtual versus in person, a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, so I love that you're, you're creating that in person so that they do, they can be, it can be immersive. It can be, um, just like a, a bigger connection opportunity. You are giving them the excuse to like leave their, put their business to the side and like take this time for themselves to learn, connect, grow all that good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you a few rapid fire questions? Um, yeah. As long as you promise that they'll make me look bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious about, all right. Um, when you're, when you're the person who's talking at your event, um, what do you have anything that you say to yourself before you take the stage or while you're on stage? Um, I, you know, I, I think just it's just positive thoughts. I don't know if it's something specific. And then there's something I always tell myself: it's just do not get attached to the outcome, mm. because if I do, then I'm like I just I get I get stressed and anxious. So it's just all right. Um, the other thing too is I guess I, and I say this almost when I end any call is you know and I tell myself this all the time: have some fun. Yeah, uh, those are great reminders. <laughs> I think it's so easy to take our minds. Like you said, like you're hating the process right now. It's so easy to get out of uh, the mindset of like why we're doing it and how much we love what we're going after. And it's important to do that even in the moment when nerves or something that had gone wrong, you know, that, that day would possibly get you, your mind off of. Uh, you know your a game yeah like last was it last year i think it was last year like all the the stuff that we ordered like you know like you know journals and pens and water like the gifts that you give people and the really nice stuff um none of it had arrived and oh no (laughs) yeah and everybody's blaming like covid logistics and i'm like look guys like this stuff was in this country like i don't know like what I was like, where is it? And nobody could find it for like the first day and the, the hotel didn't know. And then it like magically just showed up. And like I asked the hotel, did you bring it here? They're like, no, we didn't bring it here. Like UPS, nobody knew, but it got there and I, w- I was happy. So yeah, those are the things you can't let them get stuck in your crawl or like, oof, it's going to, it's going to exactly. mess Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, stuff's going to come up um, during the event and you got to <laughs> put blinders on, especially when you're the host or you know, key presenter. So what's your best tip for filling the event? Is it relentless action? Yeah, it is. I said, I wish there was something more than that. Just because here's the thing, you're going to press people. So like, let's say you have a closing event. You're like, hey, sign up for next year. You offer a discount. You can fill up a certain amount there. Then you offer your early bird. You're going to fill up a certain amount there. Um, then you're going to hit this other patch where there's like, ah, it's too early. I don't know. And that's going to be your hardest thrust where you're going to spend 80% of your time just trying to get your last 25 to 30% of your, of your people. Um, and that I believe just takes relentless action. Do you use, what's a strategy that you use? I think you try, have you tried webinars in the past? Uh, so you got to see, you could do webinars. Yeah. Um, so we'll use email. We'll find like, Hey, these, these are people that we would think would be a good fit. Cause that's the other thing too. Like we shoot ourselves in the foot. They have to be a good fit. It's yeah. not like, cause you can get somebody in there. That's just like, Oh, this is my, this is my lead group. And I just want to sell to all the people. And you're like, okay, how'd you let in, you know, salesy Sam in there. And he's just trying to, you know, sell everybody. So you have to be very careful. So we'll select certain ones, have conversations with, which is also interesting because some people like they get on this, um, I don't know how to put this, like, I guess it just kind of like strokes their ego in such a way. They're like, well, if you want me in this group, you should pay me to be in, all right, you're not a fit. All right, we're done. They're like, well, no, 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 I really want in. It's like, no, dude, if you're going to act like that, 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 that's not who we want. It's like, well, I won so many awards. And it's like, well, good for you. Like, this is about contributing, sharing. So it's just it's it's a very interesting approach to uh, to go about it, and it's kind of like you're protecting a flock because you want everybody to have a good time, and you, and you have to be selective based on certain graphics 
that are uh, all just business related where uh, they have to match up. And um, yeah, but it works out. I love that you're being selective because the, the serendipity of what happens in the room doesn't happen if you just let everybody in, like the, the magic is gone. <laughs> and so I love that you're being se- selective. And I'm wondering, so then does that mean you're having a lot of, or someone on your team is having a lot of one-on-one sales conversations to get yeah. people to sign up? We are, yeah. And yeah. just kind of, you know, it's like applying for something and seeing if mm-hmm. you're a fit. I remember I was at a leadership conference one time. And speaking of letting everybody in there, they let in this lady that like whatever they said, she would like scream like, yes, like we were at a football game, right? And it was so distracting. And it turns out she was she was hammered. This lady was like three sheets to the wind at like 10 a.m., you know, on like a Thursday morning. Um, and that's what and I, and I always go back to that. And I think about that, like, OK, we want to protect it as much as we can to make sure that everybody's in there. But yeah, to your question, yeah, it is a lot of one on one conversations for sure. Are you doing anything at the event to fill the next event? Like, are you taking registrations before people leave? At the end, yeah. We offer, like, a pretty big discount for the next year's event. And, yeah, we get a pretty good uh, bump for sales on that. Mm, good. Uh, what's the f- your favorite moment at events that at, at these events? You know, there's at the, at the end when everybody's talking about what they gained from it. And like all, mm-hmm. we call them golden nuggets. I didn't come up with that mm-hmm. term. This uh, another gentleman in the group did. It's like, yeah. So those are like your takeaways. And then when you're hearing like what everybody took away, and knowing that they're going to go back and make their business or their life better in some way, that's a huge. That's a huge win. Because some of them, you're like, I didn't even hear that, or that's what they got from that. And that to me is just so cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, so do you have a session then at the end of every mastermind where you do? A- going around the room and asking for their their biggest takeaway or their yep. win or something. That's exactly what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you start with a round robin two with yep. like a specific question? What what do you ask? Uh well you introduce yourself. So we'll go around the room and everybody really quickly introduces themselves with like three questions, like who they are, where they're from and their agency and I think actually a fourth, like what do they want to get out of uh, the group? Mm. And uh, yeah. And that kind of gives you you know, something as a conversation starter, if you remembered and you're like, oh, yeah, that person, you know, wanted to learn more about filling whatever that blank is. And, uh, you know, you can kind of break the ice with that. I do love uh, starting with a what do you need help with question mm. because, yeah, it, um, you know, you're not looking for answers in the moment, but there'll be somebody in the room who's been like, wait, I've, I've already slayed that dragon. Totally. Yeah. And I love <laughs> let that. Me, let me help you with that. Yeah. It's the power from experience, just sharing mm-hmm. from it. Yeah. What's, what's the best thing about hosting your own mastermind? Uh, just all the people you get to meet. You get to meet all people from all shapes, sizes, colors, and backgrounds. And uh, there's just so much to be gained from differences. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that's 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 really cool because I love people that have a completely antithetical philosophy than I do on something, and just understanding their thinking behind it. Like, oh wow, that's completely logical and that makes sense. But still choosing my idea or vice versa, or having them change my mind on something. Um, I uh, I love that, and I get to you know meet all these people in doing that, and they get to meet can all each other too. <clears throat> can you draw a direct line from? something you learned in the mastermind and business growth in your own business yeah you don't have to do this like this is this is like a almost like a service mission. right yeah you absolutely running this master the membership and then i'm just another agent the yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Uh, this isn't this isn't my you know my uh, full-time job um yeah. Yeah. So one is so there's this so in the agency space there's value based pricing versus hourly pricing. So I've experimented yeah. with it. Uh, so value based pricing is let's say that it's discriminated pricing depending on you know how much you think the person could afford something or the value is what you'll charge. So I used to have that thinking and I tried it and it was just it was it was difficult for me. And then by seeing others in the group um, that were hourly based, which is a more traditional model. It's a, it's it's way more scalable, 
So just switching over to that was something that was big and it was, it was easier and then just literally charging hours. And there's so many arguments for why you would charge value-based pricing. But the thing is, at the end of the day, everybody tracks time, time is money, people get paid for that. And then when you build that in, you can have 1,000, 2,000 employees. When you get into value-based pricing, it gets so muddy and messy and people make mistakes. And if you feel like maybe you're lying or overcharging, well, you remove all that. And that's something that I gained from the yeah. group and we were able to you know, scale by implementing it. Mm. So cool. But there's so many others in the group that are value-based pricing. So this right. is constant. This is one of the little debates. It's like, who's right or who's wrong? So, uh, and I love that. It's just like, okay, that's, that's you, that's your belief. And we can still, you know, sit down and have a, you know, a really good steak. Yeah. What are you reading right now, John? What am I reading? Uh, I'm still, I'm slogging through Ben Franklin's autobiography and I'm reading the book Legacy. Uh, yeah, I'm almost done with that. And are you familiar with Legacy? No. Okay. Are you familiar with the All Blacks, the New Zealand uh, rugby team? Yes. Okay. So this is a guy that like sat down, interviewed the team and built out essentially their principles and tenets that makes that team so successful. Okay. And it's a fantastic book. It comes down to like culture and integrity. It's, uh, it's really good. And the cool thing is we do this as a book club. So as, at our agency, Oyova, we, um, we had to take our leadership team and then we all read a chapter a week, and then we get together every two weeks and talk about that chapter and what's the impact on us personally and what's the impact on our business. Oh, fun. Yeah. And guess where we learned that? In our mastermind group. <laughs> so good. Uh, John, what have you got going on right now that we should know about, and where should Lynchpin Nation find you? Um... Just yeah, planning the event. The, I don't know whether you guys want to know about that or not, so, but it is a, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and I, I run an agency, Oyova. But if you guys want to find me, I love meeting new people, having a conversation. Please don't try to sell me something, though. All right? So, but, I mean, I got so many people that are already doing that. Um, but in any event, uh, you can reach me. Uh, you can shoot me an email, john, J-O-N, at oyova.com. Or you can find me and connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is spelled J-O-N. Last name is T as in Tom, S as in Sam, O-U-R-A-K-I-S. John Sarakis, the one and only on LinkedIn. We will link that up in the show notes. Thank you, John, for being here. It's been a pleasure. I always enjoy the conversation and uh, wish you an outstanding rest of the week. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Really appreciate it. And bye, Lynchpins. Thank you, uh, you know, for sharing some time. Thank you for listening to the Green Room Central podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it to Instagram. And be sure to tag at Sarah Faber and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from in the future. That'll help you know what to create for you. Also, I know you got one solid gold bucket of advice on filling your events from John today, but if you'd like a few more, 107 to be exact, then head over to fillingevents.com. Right now, I want to help you quickly master event marketing and fill your events, even if you've never done it before. I've scoured the online business world and found 107 my favorite strategies working right now. They'll help you fill your next virtual or in-person event. I want you to create the event promotion plan you need from these easy to implement customizable strategies over at fillingevents.com. This podcast is built on Kajabi. I loved how easy it was to get things set up, but more so I'm thrilled that my entire business is run within one platform. From my emails to my pages to my courses and my podcast too. It's all under one roof. If you love simplicity and scalability as much as I do, then I want you to go to greenroomcentral.com to get a free 14-day trial for your job. I appreciate your commitment to leveling up and learning the mindset and strategy of all events. Keep going. Keep learning. If you want more, head over to greenroomcentral.com for show notes and all the links from today's episode. 